please welcome Gen Z Satin. I was sitting on the beach in Bali. It's a beautiful beach and I was waiting for sunset. And I see from afar a small traditional boat come ashore. And of course a fisher was in there. And the boat just ashore. And that's the first time I met Nyoman, the fisher. So I helped him push his boat to the land, make sure that it's safe enough from the wave. And while we pushing the boat, I asked this very, very simple question to Nyoman. I say, so how's your day? Did you catch a lot of fish today? And hopefully the big ones. And he say, well, I wish. But unfortunately, you can see. He pulled some bucket and yes, it's just few fish and they are small. Actually, as a marine biologist, scuba diver, I really know what Newman said. Yes, this is Bali. And like all other islands in Indonesia, this is paradise. And I believe most of you will say Bali is a paradise. And yes, this is the center of world's coral reef. This is the place where you can see all the beauty, all the most colorful coral reef beauty of all the fish in the world. But if you go deeper, things actually different. The coral is destroyed, coral is damaged, and there are not many more fish out there. And this is not just about 75% of world's coral reef gone extinct. It's not just about the fish that will just disappear. This is about people. Because there's a lot, there are lots of people that depends on this coral reef. There are a lot of people like Nyoman and other Nyoman that depends on this fish, this healthy coral to feed their family. It's about Nyoman as a dad that depends on this coral, this fish, to ensure that he can send his kids to a good school. And I said to Nyoman, well, okay, so have you discussed this problem with our, the government, our fisheries official? And Nyoman just said, well, the last time we, I did it, they have no clue what to do. And then while Newman like, you know, trying to clean his boat, taking the fish out of the boat, he said this very, very, I, I never really expect this coming from Newman. He said, life is difficult. And sometimes you just have to accept it. When Newman said that, that words, it's like a deja vu for me. Like, I've been there before. It was like a few years ago when I'm still little kids and I and my, my parents, we're living in deep rainforest in Kalimantan, in Borneo. So I just like, yeah, 12 years old kids. And that time was just amazing. I remember I see this 
all these exotic birds, all the animals, the orangutan. There are lots of them. And I remember, clearly remember, the tree just amazing. So if we want to hug a tree, it needs about 10 of us holds hand together just to hug a tree. <laughs> and like, wow. But somehow, there are lots of foreign timber company coming to my tree, my sorry, my forest. And what they did? They chopped down all the tree. They cut down all of my trees. And then somehow again, they leave us. Which is later on I learned that it was the time when we have the Asia financial crisis. And I asked my father, that what's going on here? Why these people coming and then just cut down all, all of my trees and then no more, no more beautiful birds, no more orangutan here. And they just, just leave us with nothing. And my, my dad at that time just said, well, it's very hard to, very difficult to understand. And sometime in life, you just have to accept it. Well, that time I just like, yeah, you know, 12 years, little kids. But that time, that moment when Nyoman said the exact same words, sometimes in life you just have to accept it. I'm already 24 years old. I understand it. And I say, well, this is not right. So a carrot growing inside of me. And I said to Nyoman, well, Nyoman, if you think you deserve better life, you have to fight for it. And Nyoman just like cleaning, busy cleaning his boat. <laughs> and then he stopped and suddenly looking at me. And he said, well, Gen Z, if you can bring back the fish, we will fight again. I said, well, OK. <laughs> So right the next day, I met with the go the government of with the, go to the government office, talking with the the uh, official, and I say I discuss this problem, and just like what Nyoman said, they have no clue what to do. So I come back and then meet Nyoman and his fellow officers. I say, okay, Nyoman, just like you said, the government no clue, but I have a plan. I have an idea. So I say. We will create, we will make a fish bank. And Yaman just said, what? Fish bank? Fish bank? <laughs> and I say, yes, fish bank. Just like your normal bank where, where you save your money, our fish bank, instead of saving money, we will save our fish. So this is how we're going to do this. We will choose, we will select some part of your, or your fishing ground, the place you, you always fishing. We will close the area, we will protect it, so no one go there to fish, no one go there to catch our fish, so the fish can grow in bigger and bigger, and then makes a lot of baby fish, and the fish growing bigger and bigger again, but you can still fishing. You can continue your fishing activities, but not inside the fish bank, but outside the fish bank, because fish swim in and out. And they're thinking, well, it sounds makes sense. And I say, well, I learned this fish bank from when my, the time when I'm still in the uni university, and it works in some places in Philippines, things like that. But I'm not really sure. Nature is there are a lot of variation in nature. And no one said. Well, let's give it a try. But then we don't know what to do. <laughs> no, none of us like finish our elementary school, actually. So I said to Nyoman, well, we, work, we will work together. So I help them. I teach them some skill. I teach Nyoman and his fellow officers scuba diving. So they can see how things work underwater. So this fisherman now become scuba diver. <laughs> And then the fish move in there, moving there, like things like that. 
and then I teach them also how to do uh, like checking whether the coral is growing, whether the fish is growing bigger or more abundant, more many, many, many more fish there. So they do all this stuff, and then they also really, you know, guard the the area. They protect it like the security. And then <laughs> one year passed by, and we have this uh, very specific traditional uh, ceremony for this fish bank. So it's like uh, asking for blessing and also being thankful for what we've done. So we have this priest come in and pray for the fish bank and then sending all the prayers. And also lots of villagers come in, that small one, also the parents coming, bringing all the offerings. So it's like very sacred, sacred ceremony. But also we have like uh, the young ones, the, the girls, the boy, they, you know, this traditional dancing, the kechak dance, the Balinese dancing. So it's like a sacred ceremony, but also fun. So, and they, they invited me to come to the ceremony. So I go to the ceremony, and Yoman and his fellow officers and some of the elders come to me and say, Gen Z, a few days ago, we just checked our fish bank. And you know what we found? There are lots of fish in the fish bank. And not just a lot. They are big. They are big ones. And not just inside the fish bank. It's also outside the fish bank. There are lots of big fish outside the fish bank. So next time you ask me, how is my day? Did I catch lots of fish today? I will say definitely yes, Gen C. I catch lots of fish, and not just lots, they are big ones. <laughs> and Nyoman like, take my hands, and hold it really, really deep, and he say, Gen C, the fish bank works. We bring back the fish. You bring back the fish. You bring back our hopes. Thank you.